So 2017 is over, and I think it's brought us one of the best years of superhero movies since 2014 in my opinion. Because of this, I'll be ranking the movies to tell you which one I think is the best of 2017. Justice League was the one superhero film this year that I don't think was actually good or at least above average quality. From the trailers, it looked like the movie was trying to move into this lighter tone for the DCEU after the hate Batman v Superman got for being too dark and gritty. However, I think that only made it worse because even though I think BBS is a worse film, it at least had a unique style and vision to it and the universe around it. Justice League, however, looks like it's just trying to copy what has made the Marvel movies so successful and it also didn't help that the plot and characters lacked depth, the villain was a generic CGI mess, and the movie was basically directed by two pretty distinct filmmakers. Not to mention, there are some severe plot structure issues here. A lot of the scenes felt so loosely tied together that at times it felt like I was just watching a collection of cool moments that didn't really have any weight on the overarching story. Spider-Man Homecoming was somewhat of a disappointment in my eyes. I'm happy that the film is getting a lot of praise after the disaster that was the Amazing franchise, but I still think the original Raimi trilogy did Spider-Man the best. Homecoming thankfully tries to innovate the old formula by ditching the origin story and embracing that young high school movie style. Tom Holland was also a great casting choice, but the problem was that nothing substantial really happens plot-wise until the third act of the film. Michael Keaton's Vulture is one of the best Marvel villains so far in my opinion, but is sorely underutilized here. Lots of the action scenes with him are pretty forgettable, and the movie as a whole just felt very light. Even Peter's secret identity isn't treated to be such a big deal anymore. His best friend finds out within the first few minutes, and Aunt May's discovery is tossed out as a gag before the credits roll. Don't get me wrong, not every superhero movie needs to be some big serious epic like Civil War or BBS, it's just that this felt like nothing more than just another fun Marvel movie and not really the quintessential Spider-Man movie I expected Marvel themselves to make. Wonder Woman is by far the best DCEU movie at this point. The film was not only entertaining for the well-directed action scenes, but because it had good character work. Gal Gadot delivered a great performance as Diana and really brought some humanity to this role that the other DCU characters have been lacking. Chris Pine as Steve Trevor was also great and provided an interesting ideological battle with Diana that I think the film really could have taken in a much deeper direction during the third act, but sadly was subverted for a more generic fight the big CGI villain battle which is why this movie isn't higher on my list. Thor Ragnarok was my most anticipated movie of the year actually, and it's sort of delivered. It's definitely one of my favorite Marvel movies and the best Thor movie, mainly thanks to director Taika Waititi, who basically reimagined the franchise by adding more interesting visuals and a comedic tone, which at this point I'm fine with after the bland style of the last Thor movie. Ragnarok also added a lot of cool new characters, and the idea to mesh in the Planet Hulk storyline was genius. Thor himself is kind of a new character because of how much better he was written here. Honestly, it makes me even more excited to see Infinity War now because I want to see how this new, more interesting Thor interacts with the other Avengers. Ragnarok also had great action scenes and is the funniest Marvel movie in my opinion. The only thing holding it back from being at the top of this list is that it just doesn't embrace any drama. I get that this is supposed to be a new lighter toned vision for the Thor franchise, but the fact that a lot of old plot lines were dropped or treated as jokes makes it feel like what happened in the past movies didn't even matter. Taika Waititi said that this is essentially a reset button for Thor in his eyes, but I think he took that a little too seriously. Also Hela didn't really impress me much as a villain. The Lego Batman movie really surprised me. On the outside, it looks like your average animated comedy, but this movie has some layers. Yes, there's a bunch of DC movie jokes and references that the fans will get a kick out of, but it also analyzes the character of Batman in a unique way that many of the live action adaptations don't really touch on. For one thing, it introduces the idea of the Bat family and shows the flaws in Batman's character regarding how he's always stubborn in wanting to always do things on his own. It also touches on the bond that him and the Joker have as hero and villain in ways that both parody older movies and expand on why they actually do need each other in the world they've created. 
The final battle also has this really cool twist that I thought was both hilarious and once again really separates this movie from your typical Batman film. Not to mention it actually had a really emotional ending which I appreciated. At the time of this video I haven't seen the Lego Ninjago movie yet but I'm excited to see what else the Lego cinematic universe has to offer in the future especially after this. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was somewhat divisive among fans, as it was kind of a risky film. Yes, it had the funny jokes and fun action scenes that we've come to expect from a Guardians film, but it did some great things with the characters that made the ending that much more of an emotional punch. Director and writer James Gunn wanted to make this movie a character piece on the Guardians growing as a family. This of course led to a more slower paced film with a plot that more or less meanders until the very end to allow our characters time to talk and flesh themselves out a little more. I can see how some people didn't really enjoy that it wasn't a fast paced adventure like the first movie, but I thought that the stress on character development was worth it to deliver one of the most emotionally resonant films in the MCU. Ego is also in my opinion one of the best Marvel villains to date because of how interesting his motivation was. Not to mention this film probably has one of the most visually entertaining action scenes of the year coupled with a great score as always. Logan was not only a good superhero movie, but just a good film in general. It really broke the boundaries of what superhero movies could be like nowadays. First off, we finally get to see an R-rated Wolverine, leading to some of the most satisfyingly gruesome action scenes in any comic book movie. Its narrative also brings a lot of new and interesting things to the table, like this dystopian western setting, a superhero father-daughter relationship, and the idea of our titular hero not exactly being in his prime. Yes, The Dark Knight Rises kind of did that, but something like a magical leg brace isn't something that would bring back the old Wolverine in this movie. I also love the fact that this movie doesn't try to connect itself to any broader universe. Yes, it takes place in the same Fox X-Men world, but there aren't any blatant easter eggs or cameos by other characters. Instead, you only get the slightest references through dialogue that are only there to reiterate that certain characters have relationships that go way back. However, these small nods to past movies never detract from the personal and self-contained story being told here because they have a purpose. It's interesting because if you look back at my list, you can see that most of the lower ranked movies tend to be more reliant on the connection to their respective cinematic universes. Logan is also different in that it really doesn't have any of those happy, crowd-pleasing moments that we've been getting with a lot of these other films. The story constantly takes the characters down this spiral of misery where you aren't really as excited to see the action as you are worried about if our characters will get out alive. The inclusion of X-23 was a welcome addition as she really added to the emotional pull of the final moments of the movie. I really applaud director James Mangold and Hugh Jackman for succeeding on getting their passion project made. It was a risk but it really paid off and out of it we got one of the best and probably most groundbreaking superhero movies since the first Avengers, which is why I think Logan is the best superhero movie of 2017.